The Stellaris Galaxy is filled with many secrets. Behind them lies fathomless power, outstanding inventions, and possibilities never before imagined. What if an empire uncovers said mysteries, embraces the knowledge of the past, and forges a new future? I'm Michael and today we are finally gonna dive into Asian Cache of Technologies, a humongous mod which adds a ton of new content to the game. This includes over 520 new technologies, new ships, weapons, buildings and more. So make sure to watch this video till the end and without further ado let's see what this mod has to offer. To get started with ACOT you need to have researched at least 5 technologies from the 5th tier and you also need the ability to to have is dark matter. If you meet those requirements, a new event called the Dark Inside will allow you to investigate the properties and possible ways of utilizing dark matter. In total, there are three ways you can acquire dark matter based tech. First, you can develop it on your own. Once you finish the internal analysis special project, you will need to use your scientist to proceed further. In each field of research, you have to assign a level 6 scientist or higher. I also recommend that the assigned scientists have some of these required traits as they will make it easier for said technologies to appear. If a scientist meets these criteria, you will have to research three new technologies, one for each field of research. They are very crucial and without them you can't proceed further. Once the mentioned technologies are researched, you will be able to unlock the dark matter dimensional reactor as well as two additional components. Keep in mind that they're not the final product, they are still prototypes and even though they give you some benefits benefits, they impact other ship stats in a negative way. If you don't feel like developing the reactor on your own, you can reach out to the curators instead. By asking them about enigmatic powers, you will have an opportunity to ask them for help in understanding dark matter. To purchase their services, one of your level 5 scientists must join the curators. In exchange, all three technologies required to proceed further will appear as research options. The curators will continue to play an important role in this mod, with their trust becoming a currency which can be exchanged for knowledge. The creators now have additional dialogue options and you may ask them about different things related to the mod's lore. Once you research the dark matter dimensional reactor and you ask them about their order, you will be able to hire an Archon in exchange for 100,000 energy credits. Archons are the highest ranked members of the curator order, they are immortal and they have several traits that significantly boost their capabilities. Their also at level 10 which makes them especially valuable. The creator's station has also been redesigned and they now have a small fleet consisting of precursor ships. If you feel like you have a decent military and you haven't found the curators, you can also obtain dark matter based tech by declaring a war on a fallen empire. If you destroy about 10 of their ships, this event will give you the same free technologies required to develop the reactor. As you dive deeper into dark matter based tech, other empires might ask you for help in getting dark matter technologies and they will be willing to pay a lot of energy credits. You may give the empire the dark matter prototypes or level up their scientists to level 6 in order to help them study dark matter on their own or reject their proposal. This however can lead to them hiring pirates to assault one of your science ships and grab the dark matter based technologies. Once you have the reactor, another event will appear which introduces you to dark energy, a new resource that will be used later in upcoming tiers. With the dark energy drawing technology research, a new event will add the Delta Reactor as a research option. This allows you to dive into ACOT's first tier called Delta, a combination of two dark powers, dark matter and dark energy. The invention of the Delta Reactor marks the beginning of a new era in which dark matter and dark energy opens up previously unimagined possibilities. At the start of your journey with Delta, you may choose what technologies interest you the most and if you pick one of the following options you will gain some progress on certain technologies. From that point on, you will be able to unlock a lot of different things such as new energy weapons, kinetic and explosive weaponry, strike craft and new utility components as well as new core ship components. Keep in mind that each technology from Delta has a vanilla prerequisite, so for instance you won't unlock Delta lasers without researching gamma lasers first. All Delta components scale by 1.3 times from the highest vanilla components and some offer additional bonuses, for example dark energy shields and hard light armor also increase your hull points and some weapons have reduced 
negative modifiers. Almost all vanilla buildings get the Delta counterparts, and in order to place them you have to build the enigmatic piles first. This can be done with the superior constructs decision, which replaces your capital building with the palace. Vanilla buildings cannot be upgraded into the Delta variants, instead they need to be built separately. The buildings that you will need the most are the Dark Matter Converter, Dark Energy Pylon and the Dimensional Harvester, as they will be your main source of Dark Matter and Dark Energy. The Delta Science Complex is also important, as it also produces minor artifacts that are going to come in handy later on. You might think that ancient cache of technologies only revolves around new techs, but it also completely overhauls armies. Vanilla army units have been replaced, and now you have three army types available for recruitment. Infantry units are cheap to recruit, and they have good morale stats. Battle tank divisions are lightweight vehicles, with more health and higher damage at the expense of their morale. Land cruisers are corvette-sized ships, designed for planetary assault. They are the toughest out of the three units, but they are also the most expensive. All units will also receive upgrades with each tier, and each time their stats will continue to improve. With the Delta tier you can also unlock Ethos armies. Each fanatic ethic has their own army unit that can be recruited once you have the Delta version of the Stronghold building. There are also special units called Heroic Armies, and once again each fanatic ethic gets their own unique Heroic Army to recruit. Primitives now have their own armies, with their strength depending on the era they're in, and each Fallen Empire has their own armies as well. Hive Minds and Machines get their own ones as well, and by choosing either Psionic, Synthetic or Genetic Ascension, you will also get new army units. A new decision is also available, which boosts your forces, and you can also build defensive walls, and later equip them with defensive batteries to upgrade your defenses. Besides that, ACOT offers additional techs, which boost your army's morale, damage and health. As your scientists study precursor designs in search for new improvements, they're gonna discover that Fallen Empire techs are extremely downscaled and simplified versions of their original prototypes. They will come across the term precursor databank, and you will have to obtain the set databank to improve upon your enigmatic technologies. The first way to acquire it is to have good relations with Fallen Empires. If one of the Fallen Empires is patronizing towards you, there is a chance that they might give you the databank, and if you enjoy the Fallen Empires talks about their history, the databank will be officially yours. If you don't want to do anything with the Fallen Empires, you may ask the curators to create a new databank for you, but keep in mind that this will not be cheap. Another way to acquire the databank is to assemble it yourself. This can be done with a new artifact decision, which costs you only 50 minor artifacts, as well as some alloys, dark matter and dark energy. If you succeed, the databank will be yours, but consider the fact that there is a lot that can go wrong. Your attempts might also yield nothing, or cause the databank to go rogue, and in the best case scenario take some of your fleets. In the worst case scenario the rogue databank takes control over some of your star bases and colonies, as well as somehow manages to bring in very powerful fleets that will be impossible for you to defeat. The last way to acquire the databank is to take it by force. At the same time as the mystery of the precursor event happens, a new Cosmos Belli becomes available, which can be used against fallen empires. If if your kind wins the war, the Fallen Empire will be humiliated and the databank will fall into your hands. With the databank acquired, the precursor databank analysis will appear as a research option. It unlocks a new starbase module that will allow you to construct precursor ships in the future. After you research the aforementioned technology, you will be able to communicate with the databank. This is the moment where you will get the chance to meet Sophia D, a databank personality that is going to help you with later projects. Sophia can be contacted at any time in the contacts menu, and you can ask her about all sorts of things. For instance, she can review your technologies, or tell you about different elements of ACOT's lore. However, there are other more important things she can do. With her assistance, you can reimagine precursor designs forever lost in time. The whole process is very simple. First, you choose which design you want to replicate. Second, you have to allocate a certain amount of your resources. Each allocation has a certain chance to increase your progress, and once you select one of the three options, a special project will be issued. If you get the required amount of points, the design will appear as a research option. If you don't have enough points, you need to try again until your combined attempts add up to the required amount. If the fifth attempt still isn't enough, the prototype turns unstable and you have to start over. Now that you know how the whole project works, let's see what designs can actually be unlocked. Up first we have the Precursor Escort, a small ship which functions as a hybrid between a 
destroyer and a cruiser. The ship can house a total of 3 sections. At first glance you don't have that many sections to choose from, but once you unlock the modular escort design technology, a bunch of new sections become available and with them you can specialize the precursor escort in all sorts of different ways. Next we have battle cruisers that are essentially the precursor version of battleships. Those ships will become a crucial part of your fleets, and an armada of battlecruisers will be unstoppable during battle. Originally, battlecruisers only have 3 sections, but with the modular battlecruiser technology, you will also get 2 additional core sections, as well as 5 different section types to specialize your vessels. The Precursor Guardian is a small defense platform designed to deter smaller ships and provide point defense. It can be built normally like a vanilla defense platform at your starbase. The Guardian can house 3 sections in total. The primary section can be equipped with an artillery or missile defense system. The secondary section can host a gun cannon or another missile system, while the tertiary section can be supplied with a point defense or hunger section. Hyperions can be reimagined after you have unlocked Precursor battle cruisers. They were the original attempt at a capital ship by the Precursors, which was discarded due to high maintenance. They have a similar role to Titans, and they can host two aura components. The Hyperion has three core variants to choose from, one for regular weapons, one for missiles and one for strikecraft ships. It has two wings which can be equipped with either artillery, missile or carrier sections, as well as an additional third slot with sections sharing a similar purpose. This ship class will also be an important part of your fleet, as it's very durable and it can deal a lot of damage. The aforementioned designs are some of the simpler ones and if you want to delve deeper into fallen precursors ships, you will need to pick the Pursuit of the Past Ascension perk, which becomes available right after you start the Reimagination project. The Ascension perk also increases your diplomatic weight and gives you an additional attempt, which is going to come in handy with more advanced designs. The Precursor Oracle is something that we all thought about before and something that will be very useful especially in the early game. It's basically an armed science ship. The Oracle Wing has some small weapon slots, while the Oracle Antenna provides the ship with point defense. The ship also has some utility slots, so you can equip it with some shields or armor, and as you go through more advanced tiers, you will be able to fit in even more components. The Oracle also has a special Oracle plot device, which serves as an advanced waypoint system that generates an artificial wormhole for a quick retreat, and with later tiers, the device can be used more often, and the chance of your scientist teleporting to your capital increases. The Precursor Emissary is an advanced colony ship with some additional features. It has 3 W slot weapons, all of which have different purposes. The arrival message can be used to invade or colonize any habitable planets. The Emissary framework that comes with the vessel determines the amount of spawn pops and armies on a planet and their number increases with each tier. The Blessing message is a terraforming ray, which can be used on any planet. With it you can turn plants to any habitable or uninhabitable vanilla plant classes. You can also terraform a plant into Gaia Wells, Hive Wells, Machine Wells, Arcologies, Doom Wells as well as Fractured and Enigmatic Wells that I will talk about later. The Farewell message on the other hand is able to remove shattered, broken or shrouded wells. In addition to that, the Emissary has some weapon and utility slots. If upgraded to Alpha tier, the ship will also get some additional auxiliary slots, which can be equipped with new modules that spawn new pops or create buildings upon colonization. The Celestial Forger is the newest addition to the Precursor Reimagination project and it is a ship designed for solely one purpose and that is building celestial bodies. To use the Celestial Forger you simply need to click on a celestial object and use a new decision which is going to replace the Forger with a barren world which can be later terraformed. The Initializer is an armed construction ship piloted by combat engineers. The vessel has 3 section slots, which can be equipped with either utility or weapon components. The Initializer has a special device called the Initializer Codex. With it the Initializer can be used to increase planetary building speed if you order it to orbit a planet. The Initializer can also build special temporary turrets. The instant pilot is a small structure with two sections that contain X weapon slots, while the instant re 
Impeller has L slots instead. The turrets can only be built when there is no hostile enemy within the system, and their longevity is determined by the Codex's tier. Regular construction ships can also build them, however their lifespan is much shorter. The Precursor Assault Carrier, or PAC in short, is a ship designed to stay in formation at long distances and launch strikecraft at the enemy. The PAC can carry four sections. The primary section slot can be equipped with a spinal or forward artillery designed to defend the ship from incoming attacks. The remaining sections are hangars filled with H slots and some additional weaponry. The Precursor Sentinel can be reimagined after unlocking Guardian defense platforms. Compared to the Guardian, the Sentinel is more durable and it's suited for countering tougher vessels. The station has three sections. The I carries T-class weapons, while the wings are fitted with X slots. The Precursor Citadel is one of the most expensive designs, as it requires 600 points. It can be reimagined after unlocking Guardians and Sentinels. The Citadel has to be built in two stages like a mega structure and upon completion the starbase in the system will be replaced with the one you just built. The starbase also has its own modules and buildings. You can turn it into a giant shipyard, transform it into a humongous anchorage or an unconquerable bastion. You can also use it for other things, such as generating resources or research. Just like any regular starbase, it can be upgraded two times to a precursor nexus, which can be filled with 20 modules and 7 buildings. Once you advance to the sigma Tier, you can upgrade the starbase once again. To do that, you must build a Sigma Fortress megastructure, which is going to replace the starbase upon completion. The Enigma Lift is also a megastructure, and it also requires 600 points to be reimagined. This megastructure will greatly help you with producing resources such as dark matter and dark energy, and as you progress through later tiers, the Enigma Lift can be upgraded, and its resource production will change depending on its tier. If you visit the Precursor Design archives, you will notice that one design is still missing, and that is the Precursor Colossi. How do you actually obtain it you might ask? Once you unlock the Precursor Citadel, two years later the Everlasting Legacy event will appear, and you will find out that the Precursor Colossi is not what it seems. The so-called Herculean is an Everlasting Legacy, a massive mobile megastructure which can make an empire live forever. If you decide to take on the project, and you insist on Sophia to give you the required information, you will be able to undertake this tremendous task. First, you will need to study its design plans, and in order to do that, you must research three special projects, all of which require 5 million research points. As you research each individual project, you will find out more about the Herculean, and once they are finished, the technology for its design will appear as a research option. The Herculean is such a ginormous vessel that it needs to be built as a megastructure. It needs to be constructed in four stages, with each one requiring 500,000 alloys, and 50,000 dark matter and dark energy. As you go through the required stages, the creators themselves will get interested and they will give you resources and increase their opinion in exchange for a chance to study the Herculean. Once you reach the final stage, the Herculean will finally be completed and the mega structure will turn into a ship. In total, the Herculean can host six sections. The Herculean heart is the core of the vessel, it has several T-slots and it can host plant killer components. The Titan pillar is designed to carry titanic weapons. The Siege Pillar contains X slots, while the Assault Pillar can carry large weapons. The Carrier Pillar is a dedicated hangar section with H slots and additional large weapon slots. The Herculean has unique core ship components and an entire batch of tactical computers which determine the ship's behavior. It can also be equipped with four aura components. Once you reach the Alpha tier, you will be able to unlock new weapons and components meant for the Herculean only. Spectral Projection is the most powerful of them all, and because of that it can be equipped only once. Herculean weapons also have their Sigma tier counterparts, and their strength only increases. Aside from that, the Herculean comes with a bunch of auxiliary components that have different functions. For instance, you may use new Herculean garrisons, which spawn additional ships when the Herculean engages in battle, or equip new automated escort or battlecruiser strikecraft ships. Besides that, the Herculean also serves as a mobile shipyard, capable of building precursor designs, and with adequate technologies, it can also produce resources on its own. The Herculean also has a unique W-slot weapon, the Resonant Cascade. To use it, simply right-click on an object within a hostile empire system, and then wait for the Her Herculean to arrive. This weapon is so destructive that it causes a total dimensional collapse of the system star, 
And not only does it completely obliterate the targeted system, it also affects other adjacent hostile systems. One blast can essentially kill a whole empire in an instant, so use it wisely. As a side effect, all plants within the targeted systems will be transformed into ultra fractured or unstable fractured wells. Unstable fractured wells can be stabilized and later colonized once you research the fractured yet unshattered technology. It unlocks a new decision which issues a time special project. If completed, the plant will turn into its stable variant and you will be able to colonize it. Each fractured world is inhabited by anomalous entities, and each one will have at least 2 out of 5 modifiers, which represent hostile creatures that need to be taken care of. You better have some armies on the planet, or else these creatures will periodically attack your colony. To defeat them once and for all, all you need to do is choose a special decision corresponding to one of the modifiers, and then kill the enemy's ground armies. The hostile entities have varying strengths each time, so be careful because if you lose, the plant will become so unstable that it's going to blow up. If you succeed, the modifier will be removed and the plant will become more stable. Fractured wells also have their own blockers with massive penalties and they can be removed after researching specific techs. You can build 4 new district types, however each one is locked behind specific technologies that need to be unlocked first. Later you can upgrade the districts so that they don't take up extra space. With the Enigma Erase technology, all enigmatic based buildings have their upkeep removed and the output from jobs producing dark matter and dark energy is increased by 100% which makes the plant perfect for resource production. Once you have the alpha tier and you research the twilight soils technology, the districts will be upgraded and they will have better statistics and more jobs to offer. This technology also allows to stabilize ultra fractured wells and turn them into fractured wells that can be colonized. The plant can be improved upon even further once you have twilight soils and all district related techs mentioned earlier. With the enigmatic world creation tech, you can turn your fractured world into an enigmatic world with a new decision and a special project. The the enigmatic world is basically a reconstructed and more stable fractured world made easier to navigate for its inhabitants, however the planet is still far from being perfect. If you have enigmatic world creation, the precursor data bank, all district rated texts and these miscellaneous texts, you will be able to construct a void sphere. Before you do that however, you need to construct a fully upgraded precursor orbital ring. They can be unlocked after you research precursor citadels and they have 3 stages in total. Once you have the precursor orbital ring, and the plant is clear from any anomalies, you may use the decision to build the Void Sphere. The Void Sphere is basically an advanced ecumenopolis capable of housing hundreds of pops. In fact, you can probably move most if not all of your pops onto it. The plant has some very powerful districts that will heavily boost their economy, research production, etc. Fractured worlds may also spawn naturally, and as you explore the galaxy you may stumble upon fractured worlds guarded by a precursor sentinel. These specific fractured worlds stand out from the others due to the fact that they have existed for a long period of time, and as soon as they're settled, you will detect a massive graveyard of ships on the surface and a new archaeological site will be created. If you finish the site with a perfect outcome by aligning the artifacts and selecting the Delta Reactor as a power source, you will acquire the blueprints for precursor escorts, battle cruisers, and Hyperions, as well as additional techs which increase their hull points. A group of Fallen Empire ships will also appear, and you will be able to restore the Amerigo with a special project. This mega structure is an ancient research station which produces some research as well as additional resources, and it can be upgraded over time to produce even more. You will will also obtain the Amerigo Restoration Beam, which upon activation may give you some resources or uncover more precursor ships. Fractured and ultra fractured worlds can also be created with new bombardment stances. Using the punishment bombardment stance will result in the plant becoming an unstable fractured well or a ultra fractured well depending on the random outcome. The exterminatus bombardment stance can be unlocked at alpha tier. It has the same effect, except it is more efficient. If you have the final world technology, you will be able to use a new decision on any plants within your space to turn them into a fractured or ultra fractured world. However, with this method, the plant have to be stabilized. It also allows you to control the bombardment process and before a plant reaches 100% devastation, an event will allow you to choose its fate. 
Aside from new ship designs, the databank also allows you to dive into the next tier called Alpha. All that you need to do is ask Sophia about Alpha experiments, and if you decide to continue what the precursors originally started, Sophia will transfer all of the necessary information. You will need to research three technologies, each from a different field. Once you do that, the Alpha Enigmatic Reactor is going to appear as a research option. Now, you might be wondering, why is it marked as a dangerous technology? By advancing into the Alpha tier, you're going to outtech the Fallen Empires, and they're not gonna like that. There is a chance that Fallen Empires will send a transmission, in which they demand you to give them the Alpha project or else, they will intervene. There are three ways to handle this situation. First, you can tell them to go away, but the Fallen Empire will not be pleased. Immediately, they're gonna declare a war in hell to take the Alpha project, and they will also receive additional fleets to win the war. If the war happens, there's no going back, and if you've got what it takes to defeat the furious Awakened Empire, you will be generously rewarded. You may also give in and let them confiscate the Alpha project, but this will only delay the inevitable. The Fallen Empire will also awaken, and it's only a matter of time until they re-establish their supremacy. The third option gives them a chance to think twice before they do anything stupid, although it is only available when your fleet power is higher than that of the Fallen Empire. The awakening will not occur, and they will only get mad that they can't really do anything. Once you have the Alpha Reactor, you will gain access to new upgraded components, buildings, and armies if you have researched their Delta counterparts. Alpha weapons and components scale by 1.3 times from their Delta variants. Each precursor design will also receive new Alpha-based sections, all of which offer additional slots. You can also unlock new things, such as the Giga Fortress. This building is a giant military fortress that heavily boosts your armies and adds a lot of naval capacity. The fortress also has some other features. For instance, you can deploy it as a ship with a new decision and land it on your planets. You can customize it in the ship designer and use it to defend your colonies. The next tech tiers don't follow a single path. In fact, they are sidegrades that can be acquired independently. The Phi and Runic tier are connected to a new paramilitary faction called the Fennin Corps. You may stumble upon their drop point system while exploring the galaxy, and inside you will find an armada of very powerful ships. The Fennin Corps will be friendly, and they can provide with various services in exchange for energy credits and influence. You can hire new leaders, and the higher their skill level, the more expensive they become. You may also hire fleets consisting of various ships, and commission new army units as well. The process of obtaining their technologies is fairly straightforward, you simply need to attack them. However, this is no easy feat, so grab your Herculeans as well as your strongest fleets, and send them towards the drop point. The Fennin Corps will immediately notice your hostile activities and you will no longer be able to use their services. A new event chain about them is going to start and in the situation you can monitor your progress and reverse engineering their tech. The fighter is basically your attempt at reimagining the corpse technology with dark matter and dark energy. To do that you must gather fanon fragments by destroying as many fanon ships as possible. To get started with the fight here, you need 50 fanon fragments. The first technology gives you some standard energy, kinetic and point defense weapon types. You also get the fire reactor, as well as small and medium fire shields and armor. The intensive fire analysis becomes available once you have two hunched fanon fragments, and once it's researched, you will get new auxiliary and ship components as well as strikecraft ships, large shields and armor, new torpedoes and other additional weapons. The last fire tier technology appears after obtaining a thousand fanon fragments, with the surplus fragments being turned into alloys. You will get new ship auras, extra weapons for T and X slots, and additional utility components which increase your weapon damage. Compared to the previous tiers, Phi components scale roughly by 1.3 times from Alpha. There are also no Phi buildings, and no Phi ship sections to research. Once the drop point is cleared out, all that you need to do is to invade the Fallen Command Vault. If you succeed, the vault will be yours, and your next move will be to fight the remaining Fallen defenses hidden deep within the vault. This will also be an opportunity for you to unlock the runic tier, which is basically what the Fallen Corps normally use. To investigate the numerous sections of the vault you need to have researched all Phytechs, and you need to have armies stationed on the surface. If you meet these requirements you can use a new decision to start the onslaught. An event is going to appear, and you can take on different approaches to attack the Fallen's defenses, with each one having their own pros and cons. Once you pick one of the following options, new hostile armies are going to appear, and if you emerge victorious the outer corridors are going to be cleared out, 
and your study of the Fallen's technology will begin. If you fail, the Fallen Corps will take over the vault, and they will take control over the system's star base. Also, make sure to always have some armies on the vault, as the Fallen might surprise you with a retaliation from time to time. The first assault gives you the runic reactor, some basic energy, kinetic, explosive and point defense weapon components as well as new strikecraft ships as research options. After the Fallen Vault Lockdown modifier expires, you can continue your conquest. The second raid takes place in the middle corridors. You can attack them normally but deal with additional defenses, or release experimental xenomorphs that will assist you for a short period of time, or drill through them with a new device. The middle corridors contain even more runic technologies, and you'll be able to unlock new ship components, shields, armor, weapons, and utility components. Besides that, you can also unlock new fun and duty men units. The third assault goes even deeper into the vault, and it takes place within the inner corridors. This section contains both mechanical and organic defenses, and you may choose which ones you want to counter first, or strike at them both. The difficulty rises once again, and in total the Fallen can amass roughly 100,000 army strength. If you persist though, you will be rewarded with even more advanced technologies. More ship components become available to research, and new X and T slot weapons appear as research options. Aside from that, you will also unlock one of the Fallen's ship designs, the Star Chaser Squadron. Fallen ships can only be built from their drop point starbase, and they already come with predetermined designs, so you can't customize them. The Star Chaser Squadron is basically a bunch of tiny ships equipped with point defense weapons and missiles. They are incredibly fast with good evasive capabilities, and they are meant to strike first. The fourth assault is the last one, and it's also the hardest of them all. The Fallen will throw everything they've got, and they will fight to death to protect the vault. In total their armies will have over 200,000 military strength, and if you haven't defeated all of their forces from the inner corridors, the remaining armies will join in as well. If you succeed the vault will be finally free from Fanon's forces, and you will have the ability to disable their dimensional mirror with a special project. Upon completion the Fanon will be cut off from your galaxy, and this concludes the Fanon event chain. As a reward for winning the assault, you will get some additional key slot weapons, a new army unit, it and the rest of the Fallon's ship designs. I'm not gonna describe them in great detail, as you can't customize them anyways. Star destroyers are an equivalent to cruisers, and they are meant to stop enemy fleets from reaching heavier ships. Their design mostly consists of kinetic weapons. The Star Devastator is Fallon's battleship equivalent. It utilizes mostly projectile weapons, as well as energy and kinetic weapons. The Star Decimator is a giant carrier slash sniper ship equipped with mostly explosive weapons. It also has a Ignem Eternum, a very powerful energy weapon that deals a lot of damage. The Star Dominator serves as either a flagship or a support command ship. It has a lot of X and L slot weapons, and it's heavily armed. Its second iteration can house even more weapons, and it is equipped with a Yamato cannon to make it more effective against hostile enemies. You can actually get it earlier in the game if you're lucky enough by using the Restoration Beam Relic. The Star Annihilator is the most powerful Fanon ship out there, equipped with multiple Yamato cannons and two Ignem Eternums, this ship can take out basically anything. The Star Overload is a defense platform that can only be built at the drop point star base. It's a large platform designed to counter large capital ships. They are equipped with multiple X, L and T slot weapons as well as multiple strikecraft hangers. The Star Overwatch on the other hand is a smaller and cheaper defense platform made to take out smaller fleets. The Runic tier is the second most powerful tier from this mod, and compared to the Phi tier, it scales roughly by 1.4 times. There are no runic tier buildings in base A card, but if you really want them, go install acquisition of technologies, which adds a new runic tier buildings, as well as more fun and related content. The sigma tier can be unlocked approximately 20 years after you have the alpha reactor. Your scientists will hear a rumor about an unknown energy source called Starite. Later, Sophia will provide you with more information, and if you decide to learn more about this source of power, Sophia will give you the Star Starite Reactor as a research option, as well as some Starite to begin exploiting this new resource. Starite cannot be found anywhere within the galaxy, and in order to produce it you have to build Starite Generators, which are basically artificial stars made to produce more Starite for your needs. Later you will have the possibility to convert Dark Matter and Dark Energy into Starite with the Starite Energy Conduit. Eventually you will unlock more advanced generators capable of producing even more Starite. It is important, however, that you don't get crazy 
upgrade the way of your Stellarite production and monitor your stockpile, as there is a chance that a Stellarite anomaly is going to spawn. You can vent 5000 Stellarite units to prevent it from spawning, or you may also do nothing and allow one of the four outcomes to happen. The anomaly can fail to spawn, allowing you to gather a small amount of Stellarite. The anomaly can fail to spawn but you will find a way to encourage it to form, and you may let it be until it dissipates on its own, or you can hunt it down causing it to turn hostile. In third and fourth outcomes, the anomaly spawns on its own, and if the fourth outcome happens you can keep it as a pet, and feed it with Stellarite so that it won't dissipate, or you can destroy it and get Stellarite instead. Once again you get more upgrades for ship components, armies, and new ship sections with even more slots. The Sigma tier is the most powerful out of all of the tiers from this mod, and when it comes to components, it scales by 1.5 times from the Phi tier. Once again there are no Sigma tier buildings, but you can install acquisition of technology, which adds more Stellarite related features. Aside from that you can also unlock a new bombardment stance called Annihilatus, which is basically a built-in planet cracker. You can also crack your own planets with the honorable discharge decision if a Stellarite generator is present on the surface. If you don't like some parts of this mod, for instance you might think that something is too overpowered, or you simply dislike some of its content, you can select which features you want in a configuration menu that appears at the beginning or can be accessed with a new edict. You can enable or disable installed ACOD submods, select which text should or should not appear or which text you should be available to research. You may also disable certain events, determine the amount of assistance the AI receives, or disable certain contents such as void spheres, Herculeans, etc. ACAT also offers three new origins that are supposed to give you a head start in the game. Each origin has a configuration menu in which you can determine how much you have expanded, the amount of your colonies, the number of readers and their skill level, as well as how many ships you want at the start. Depending on the origin you have chosen, you will get either vanilla tier 3 or tier 5 techs, or if you have picked Legacy of the Void, you will have many delta tier techs already researched. If you feel like the game isn't challenging enough, then go ahead and install the override sub mod, which adds new crisis components rebalanced around ACOD's final component tiers, and overall makes the crisis more challenging to defeat. This mod also gives delta components to fallen empires, and improves many other things so that Vanilla Stellaris becomes more challenging with ACOD. You may also install the extra defines and changes mod, which alters several vanilla values to make them fit with ACOD. Features such as dark matter habitats, the production core project, war budget, and buildable gatekeepers are not present in base ACOD, as they come from Acquisition of Technology, which is a submod made by Fragjacker. This mod also acts as a patch between ACOD and the Dawn of Ascension. It also changes how tech tiers work, and with it the runic tier becomes mandatory to acquire Stellarite. Go check out the mod on Steam, I really recommend you guys try it out, it's a lot of fun and it can make your game a lot more interesting. You can also visit Chiru's Patreon page if you want to support the mod's development, and if you like this video go check out my other mod related content and click that subscribe button. I put a lot of effort into this video and this project was by far the biggest I've made on the channel. If you want me to cover a specific mod or if you have any suggestions in general or I missed anything let me know down in the comments, I will see you in another video video and goodbye.